my price tag was uh, 100,000 pounds. So if they caught me or maybe kidnapped me or killed me, then they, some people could get paid for 100,000 pounds. Finn Lau became a Chinese enemy of the state overnight. He is one of a growing number of Hong Kongers who are currently fleeing to Britain. The trend has been sparked by draconian laws introduced by China to massively restrict the rights of Hong Kong citizens. Those who demonstrate against China, such as photographer Jim Wong, face harsh police measures, criminal charges, and imprisonment. This is me. Everybody just knows about this video, and all of them believe this guy will be there. From their London exile, internationally known representatives of the Hong Kong democracy movement, such as Nathan Law, are trying to wake up Europe. My message to the European freedom-loving people is don't take freedom for granted. Your liberal democracy is under constant threat. Nathan Law is one of Hong Kong's best-known democracy activists. America's Time magazine recently listed him as one of the 100 most influential people worldwide. After China effectively declared the democracy movement illegal last summer, citing its so-called national security law, 27-year-old Nathan fled to London and has since been pursuing his campaign in exile. This comes at a high price for him. Three months ago, when I had successfully and safely passed the border control at Hong Kong airport and boarded the flight to London, I reminded myself leaving is not the ending. Leaving marks a new start. Our comrades are leaving Hong Kong more and more for the UK due to political oppressions back home. I didn't really have the opportunity to say goodbye to my fellows and to my families because I understand that that will endanger them. We could see that um, the ones who suffer are not only the ones who are being prosecuted, but their families. Nathan Law has become cautious. After he fled in June 2020, he kept his whereabouts a secret. Many of the democracy activists are afraid that unknown assailants might ambush them, harm them, or kidnap them and take them to China. Law's speech in October was his first public appearance in his new home. We don't even know if our personal safety would be threatened. We can never be sure what odd, random guys turning up and approaching us are going to do. In Nathan Law's native Hong Kong, a battle has been raging between two systems for years, and it's now escalating. When Britain handed over its former crown colony to the People's Republic of China in 1997, Beijing guaranteed Hong Kongers a certain amount of autonomy and democratic freedom, such as the right to vote. But Beijing has since been trying to restrict these freedoms with laws which undermine the freedom of expression and freedom of the press. Nathan Law has been fighting this since his student days. He went into politics early and was the youngest politician ever to enter the city parliament, much to the disgruntlement of the pro-China Hong Kong government. Law and his fellow activists were also involved in the mass protests against the growing influence of China in 2019.
China finally stifled these protests in June 2020 with a draconian law, which, among other things, allows for so-called dangerous persons to be extradited to China. Fleeing to London seems to be the only safe way out for many critics of China. But not all of them make it. These exiled Hong Kongers are demonstrating for the release of 12 young democracy activists. Beijing had arrested them as they were trying to flee to Taiwan. They have been detained in China ever since. Our demands are simple and humble, democracy and autonomy, and we will not give up. We will do whatever we could do, whenever we are, with whatever cost. Nathan Law is considered a hero by many Hong Kongers, in particular those who recently had to flee just like him. People such as photographer Jim Wong seek contact with him, ask his advice, and want to be around him. A doll with a helmet, gas mask, and diving goggles. This is the gear worn by activists to protect themselves from tear gas and water cannons in Hong Kong. For many of the refugee activists, such encounters will be a highlight in the coming weeks of their life in exile. Photographer Jim Wong fled to London two months after Nathan Law. He too took part in the protests against China, for which he faces a long prison sentence. This put him in a dilemma. Either stay in Hong Kong and live with the constant fear of going to jail, or swap his life with family and friends for the loneliness and supposed freedoms of Europe. When I was leaving, I, I didn't tell anyone, uh, in, including my families. But when I uh, got settled down in here, I tried to tell my story to my friends, to my families, to let them know uh, uh, what the situation of mine. But um, when I tried to contact my family, they understood that oh, that is a really uh, serious problem because I never go back to Hong Kong and they just cry on the phone. Wong is currently waiting to be granted asylum. He has hardly any money, no job, and no new friends as yet. His calls to his girlfriend in Hong Kong are often the highlight of his day. How about you? Are you planning to quit your job? Not really, I'm just waiting to get fired. You are better off being fired. You should discuss this with me. If you were to leave, are you planning to come here, or what's your plan? It really depends on whether or not I get fired. If I hadn't signed the contract, they would have fired me. So we could only stay put and wait and see. Let's talk again later. I'll let you know when I get home. The pain of separation, homesickness, and loneliness. The fact that Jim Wong fled in the middle of a pandemic, where everyone in the world is keeping their distance, makes everything more difficult. When I first arrived in London, I feel unreal because uh, during the COVID-19, all the country had been locked down. I remember the thought of, the, of that moment is, um, is, is that I'm gone crazy or they were gone crazy because it's uh, so unreal. Since the virus took a firm hold on London, it's gone quiet in the metropolis.
it's virtually impossible for new arrivals like Wong to meet people. He describes his new life in exile in a blog. To help the unemployed photographer make ends meet, readers pay to read it. His first blog entry shows his journey into exile. You can see this is the video when I was leaving Hong Kong. It just feels so unreal and so horrible and uncertain. When I want to see Hong Kong again, I can watch that video because that video means a lot to me. There is no forever in the world. When I look back at those things, I feel it's still complicated. Yeah, I wish I could go back in that moment. Back to the time when he and all the others in Hong Kong still believed that they could succeed in their fight for democracy. The 31st of August, 2019, was the day that shattered that belief. In this underground station, police action against the demonstrators was so brutal that Hong Kongers have now turned the place into a memorial site for their protests. Jim Wong is one of those who was seriously injured. I thought I would be dead, actually, because when the scenes of the Prince Aswa station on that night is uh, horrible. You know, everybody get hurt, just like a disaster movie. This is me. Everybody just knows about this video and all of them believe this guy will be here. Now you can see that still chasing me. And I just ran into the elevator because the people could, could protect me. The prosecutors accused Wong of participation in an illegal gathering. Eight further charges were added later. He was threatened with up to 10 years in jail. When I realized that reality, I'm, I'm so desperate. After three days, I brought my ticket from the internet and tried to leave in a really secretly. I don't, didn't tell anybody, just leave. The UK had previously granted Hong Kongers a six-month stay without a visa. In summer, the British government announced that citizens of the former colony could stay for up to five years and then become naturalized. This is why so many of them are heading to the UK. This former employee of the British consulate in Hong Kong was accused of espionage by the Chinese authorities. He was abducted and tortured. Today, he lives in a shared flat in London. The UK has granted him political asylum. Simon Chang volunteered to work for the British consulate in Hong Kong when they were seeking local staff. His job was to report on the protests from the inside and document the activities on local social media channels. He completely denies any allegations of espionage. From some of the people's perspective, they thought that I'm spying, but it just depends on your position. I feel this kind of information, as you see, this kind of thing is all public information. But if I wanted to collect those public information and let the British diplomat to get better to get better understanding of what's actually happening in Hong Kong, so why not? China saw it differently and arrested Chang at Hong Kong airport in August 2019. When I've been out of the detention center, I almost immediately have been handcuffed, shackled, and blindfolded and hooted. And then they dropped me onto the private van 
the whole scenario would be like a kidnapping. And then they drive me to unknown places. And then they hunt me up. I cannot move just a little bit. And when you will feel painful, sword, and you will get shuffled. Once you feel shuffled, they will bitch me. They bit me at the weakest point, like this white joint, or ankles, or etc. I can't feel from how many hours, but it seems like countless hours. For 15 days, nobody knew where Chang was. Whether it was due to the public campaign or pressure from the British government, China released him. After various detours, he arrived in London six months later. I have a, always have a nightmare. For example, like Chinese agent want to bring me back in the UK, or I realize I'm suddenly in Hong Kong. Always that sense of fear would be haunting me. Um, that would be uh, the uncertainty and fear. The last time I come here, I was still the worker for the consulate, and now I'm gonna be a refugee, and I, I never ever have a chance, maybe, for the rest of my life to back to my hometown. Simon Chang is currently living from his savings, and sometimes writes for the media. He doesn't know how long things will continue like this. China's policies also affect Hong Kongers who have been living in London for a longer time. Property expert Finn Lau moved to London for a job in early 2019. As mass protests got going in Hong Kong, nobody realized he was one of the organizers of the movement, writing in online forums under his pseudonym Lam Chow. His slogans, Fight for Freedom and Stand with Hong Kong, have now become battle cries. The man who nobody knew became an anonymous hero. By day, an inconspicuous employee, but after work, an undercover force driving the democracy protests. I cannot tell my family and my friends in Hong Kong what I have been doing for Hong Kong. And on the other hand, my teammates and those, those teammates in my team, they, I would not let them to know too many details of my personal life because, uh, bec again, it's because of safety issue. So I have been uh, struggling because I cannot tell uh, anyone uh, what I have been facing yeah, in the full picture. His cover was blown in the summer of 2020. Pro-Chinese journalists discovered and revealed the identity of the person behind the pseudonym, Lam Chow. Virtually overnight, the 26-year-old became an enemy of the Chinese state. At first, he didn't know what to do. After two months uh, of uh, pondering or thinking, then I just think that I need to do something. He's now a wanted man in Hong Kong. Lau decided to be proactive and published a video in October, a declaration of war on China from exile. Greetings, this is Lam Chao, alias Fin Lau. Yes, this is my actual appearance. It was never our aim to become refugees. Hong Kongers scattered across the globe must demonstrate our unique worth and strength in impending the CCP, creating our own future and earning respect from our international allies in the meantime. Give us liberty or give us death. Many of the Hong Kong democracy activists started getting organized in London in the fall. Some of them are more radical, like these demonstrators in front of the Chinese embassy. But most of them are fighting a peaceful campaign for democracy in their native country, like photographer Jim Wong. A lot of Hong Kongers know that protest on Friday. And uh, every Friday, they will have a lot of new guys who are coming to the uh, UK from the Hong Kong and uh, just want to meet up them and understand what the situation they are facing. 
The regular Fridays for Freedom demonstrations during the winter have also increasingly become a networking event for the democracy activists. Many of them are worried about their livelihoods. So you have been staying in the same place? The same place, and I've started looking for a job. For you, there shouldn't be much to worry about. It's worrying. I'm running out of money. <laughs> it should be all right. I should manage to find myself a job. You shouldn't have any problem. How about you? I have to beg for money these days. <laughs> the former staffer of the British consulate in Hong Kong, Simon Cheng, is part of the group. Hi, Simon. Okay, okay. Each one of us is insignificant and holds such small power, and yet there is no difference between the ones who are standing in the front line and those who are supporting from the backstage. We should encourage them to speak out. If there were no one who dares to speak out, Hong Kong's voices would be unheard and drowned. This has been what the Chinese Communist Party is trying to achieve. Then they start singing their secret national anthem, Glory to Hong Kong. Nowadays, they could be arrested for singing this in Hong Kong. Here I can speak for myself. I can speak freely. So that's the things how much money cannot buy. So I would still feel lucky. I'm still alive. <laughs> While Wong and Chang campaign for Hong Kong from exile, events in their homeland have come to a head. Hong Kong's security forces are arresting more and more democratic politicians and journalists who are critical of China. The whole democratic opposition has resigned, and increasingly more famous activists, such as Joshua Wong, are being given prison sentences. How do the activists in London react to such news from home? Nathan Law tweets his feelings. It is despairing to witness your dearest friends being imprisoned while you are living in exile. Yes, you have your role overseas. Yet, no matter how hard I work, a sense of guilt always haunts me. I feel like I owe them something that I cannot repay. A speechless night. This is surely a reason why Nathan Law travels tirelessly throughout Europe. Here, he has become one of the main activists of the Democracy for Hong Kong mission. Good morning. I'm Nathan. I'm from Hong Kong. When China's leadership is on a state visit, like here in September in Germany, Nathan Law is not far away, condemning the Chinese regime and supporting local activists. I've written a letter to the Foreign Minister Maas saying that Germany could take the lead to take the sanctioning mechanism in the European Union to implement that on the uh, Chinese of of officials who are responsible for the human rights violation and to consider other countermeasures towards the national security law. Back in London, the autumn's second coronavirus wave may have restricted Law's traveling diplomacy, but it has not slowed him down in his mission. My message to the European freedom-loving people is don't take freedom for granted. Your liberal democracy is under constant threat, and by the monster, basically we fed them for the past decades. So I'm urging you to really get your head straight to start working on constraining this authoritarian expansion and trying to implement policies that hold these people accountable. There are millions of people that are suffering under this authoritarian regime, and we are not going to pretend nothing happened. Law doesn't talk about how he feels personally, 
or how he's coping with his lonely life in London. He hasn't yet decided whether he will stay in London and apply for asylum. Law makes a clear distinction between his political activism and his personal life. He does reveal this. If we realize that there is a probability that couldn't able to go back for at least that case, it's definitely not a good feeling and emotionally it's very demanding. But for me, I, I see it as more than myself. Uh, it's not about myself, it's about how we could advance the course of Hong Kong's movement. Even though I have to pay the price, uh, I'm willing to do so. Finn Lau, organizer of the protest movement Stand with Hong Kong, also constantly wonders whether his mission is worth the sacrifice. My price tag was uh, 100 thousands pound. So if they caught me or maybe kidnapped me or killed me, then they, some people could get paid for 100 thousands pounds. At first, it was, I was quite shocked after hearing such a rumor. But then I just adapt to, to this sort of uh, fear. And it doesn't stop me from uh, fighting, yeah. So what is next for the activists? Jim Wong has plans for a future in exile. As soon as his asylum is granted, he wants to move to Brighton on England's south coast to watch the ocean and hear the crashing of the waves. Wow. Look at that view. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, this is the first time I see the ocean again. When I look at the oceans, I feel peaceful in my mind and, uh, and uh, forgot a lot of uh, bad things in my life. Yeah. I think I will try to cooperate with the other activities, but besides that, I'm also a son of my mother, I'm a son of my father, I'm a boyfriend of my girlfriend, and also I'm a photographer. I need to think about my future, my girlfriend's future, my family. to you, there will, see, there will be another doors open for you. This is the God said that I need to have a faith and I believe that uh, the Hong Kongers can free the Hong Kong in the future and the CCP will be done for.